we want to talk about files. We want to see how we're going to deal with files and keep records in the files, pick stuff from files. How do we do it? For that, to be able to teach that, I actually uh, created a class. Uh, as usual, all the class employee is my favorite one because uh, anybody wants to find a job, so you relate with employees. Okay? So I have an employee over there. He has a constructor, receives some values, sets the values. Very simple thing. It has a print function over here, the standard print function that prints stuff, and it has an operator that is overloaded with O stream, extremely important. Okay? It's uh, overloaded with uh, O stream, and it can print itself, print itself as a comma separated value on, a on, a, on the screen. Okay? Now, when we are dealing with uh, IO stream, let me actually bring up the web page for you. That's essentially what the family of files look like. Now you can, you can add a W in front of it and make it white character so it becomes. Uh, 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 you can uh, have uh, two byte uh, base characters, Unicode characters set in there, but we don't want to go there. It's in there. Take a look at it. It's just uh, um, the, the concept is the same. I'm not going to expose you to two different types of thing. It's the exact same thing for both. Uh, but anyways, you have an I.O. base and basic iOS, iOS and iOS. For you, iOS is visible, so the yellow ones, forget about it. Okay. So it's iOS, and out of iOS, you have iStream and OStream. And you know those two pretty well, because iStream is the class that uh, CIN is made up of. OK? And OStream is the class that Cout is made up of. And these classes are fully, they, these, you cannot instantiate them. They instantiate them, they, they, they get instantiated in, in IOStream header file. So essentially, when you say include IOStream header file, C in and C out is instantiated for you for use. Why did they do that? Why did they prevent their uh, instantiation? It's because it's a unique thing. Console on a, on a program is a unique thing. You cannot have two terminals at the same time. You see what I'm talking about? Like you cannot print, not that you cannot open two terminals, but your program runs always on one terminal, and it has one console. Therefore, C in has, can, should only have one instance. You don't have, you cannot say, read from this keyboard. No, read from that keyboard. There is one keyboard, one console, you deal with it. There are not two of them. Because of that, they made these objects unique. So when you say C out, it prints on a screen that your program is running. When you say C in, it gets it. That's why you don't instantiate them, and they are all there. <clears throat> now, IF stream is an ex exact child of I stream, and OF stream, exact child of O stream. And these are objects that are created to handle files. They, they work exactly like their family, iStream and OStream, absolutely no difference. Anything CN can do, IFStream can do too. Anything OStream can do, OFStream can do too. No difference because of inheritance. And they put them together because when you are dealing with a file, you don't only, you don't have two different devices. When you are reading and writing for console, you have two different devices. You have a screen that you print on, you have a keyboard that you read from, two different things. <clears throat> but with a file, you can read from a file and print into the exact same file, save in the exact same file. It's called random access, to read and write from a file. Therefore, you should be able to open the same file for both reading and writing. Therefore, that's where multiple inheritance comes in. From IF stream and OF stream, F stream comes out. F stream is an object that is inherited, inherited the two into one. If you have an instance of F stream, you can open a file for reading and writing at the same time. You've all dealt with files in OOP244 already, correct? <clears throat> OK, so we're going to kind of start from there, and then uh, we'll continue. Because of that fact that we can actually do that, we can actually uh, uh, read and write uh, from the same file, uh, from, uh, exactly the same way we are doing with iStream and OStream, I'm going to actually write a code over here and see how it's going to work out. 
So I'm going to create a vector called employee E, and that vector of mine has these employees in it. It's all characters of Simpsons, if you, if you, if you watch the cartoon. Homer and Ned and Wade and Lenny, Edna, Barry, Charles. Uh, anyways, so, so uh, these are the employees that we have, right? And we want to, we want to uh, have a work with these employees. So if I actually <coughs> uh, go through this, I can actually write something like, I can literally say over here for, say, auto, uh, EMP in E, I can say C out EMP and L, correct? So I'm going through all the uh, uh, employees that I have over there, and if I run this beautiful program for, of, me, of mine three years later, four years later, this is what I'm going to have on the screen, correct? Any problem with that? Yes. Can I explain the what? The for loop. That's a for. That's a. That's a range loop. That's a. That's a for loop. That so essentially, what happens? EMP becomes an iterator of E. EMP becomes an iterator of E, which is a vector. And through this for loop, points to the starts from the first one and traverses through it right to the end. You can do it with a regular array too. Okay? So essentially you are saying EMP is an iterator of E. Start from the beginning and go to the end. It traverses through every single one of them, one by one. Okay? And because I overloaded the uh, O-stream operator and I'm saying print, it just prints it out. Are we okay with it? And how does it print it? It prints it like this. Are we okay with its printout? All right. Now, please take a look at the structure of my operator. It's oh, See, that's why I always say whenever you are writing a display, a print function for a class, make sure your OStream function passes through it. Why do I say that? Why don't I just use C auto with it instead of OS? Why I'm passing through it? It's because if I want to, I want to be able to do something like this. I want to say, create an OF stream, call it file. I call it employee.txt. And instead of C out, I'm going to put the file in here. What's going to happen? File is OF stream, correct? Which means, it is child of O stream, correct? So anything O stream can do, O F stream can do. Now, to be able to, to be able to make the file work the same way at C out working, I have to call its virtual method for printing, correct? And the insertion operator is a virtual method of O stream. Therefore, when I say file, insert to the file, instead of inserting to screen, what happens is that it actually gets that one and puts it, because it's the parent's pointer, it calls the latest version, and therefore it's going to actually be written in a file. So if I run this program now instead, if I execute this program three years later, Four years later, this is going to be the output, which is nothing. But where did it go? I actually go over here. I'm going to right click and say add existing item. And now I will see that an employee.txt is generated over there. And if I look at employee.txt, it's the exact same thing that got printed on the file. Are we okay with this? Pardon me? So we overload the gesture, right? So can we append the test to the end of the file? Yeah, so it, it, it's because we overloaded it, yeah. it, and we are, and in my overload, because in my overload, 
I am telling OS and it's the OS stream, so this OS actually becomes a reference to the file now. And because this operator is a virtual operator, it calls the latest version in OF stream, which is actually writing it in a file instead of a screen. Therefore, that happens. Yeah. I mean, if we run the, the program again, so it overwrites it. Oh, yeah. It overwrites. Yeah, it's not going to add. If you want to add, you have to add append to it. OK? And that's so the, what he was saying, if I run this again, and I look at uh, employee.txt, nothing changes. If I want to add it, you remember from last semester, I have to add iOS append, right? I ha you don't know? Oh, so, so in here, if you have for a second argument, you can over here say iOS append or at end, how you want to add. So you can actually say that one. Uh, and, and use that one and keep appending to the end if you want to, okay? But we don't want to do that. We want to overwrite. So that, I'm not going to do that. This is from IP, OOP244 again. So you can always add a flag over there, and through that flag, you can say what you want. And there are different combinations that you can add these things up. And if you have forgotten that, if you have forgotten that, you can always go to OOP244. Uh, timeline, I think it is. Seriously? Okay. Um, oh, there you go. That's from OP244 notes. Okay? So, iOS in, opening for reading, for opening for out, opening for append, opening for truncate. Truncate means to overwrite and shrink it to zero. And by default, that's the case, okay? Uh, at end, it means you open the file and it writes at the end, but you always go back and write in the middle. With append, it always writes at the end. Now, these are the combinations that are useful to, to be used. If you are using IF stream, if you are using IF stream object, of course, iOS out doesn't make sense because it's an input file. If you want to use the mix of both, you have to create an F stream. If you have to create an F stream that has both IF stream and OF stream in its belly, so you can use both opening modes. But if you are Using an object of type OF stream, logically, the flags that deal with opening a file is valid. The rest is not, right? Use your common sense. Don't open a file for reading. Don't use an object that only reads and try to print something into it. That doesn't make sense. OK? And that's uh, from. Uh, uh, where is it in OP244? Um, I think it's input and output refinements. Okay. Any questions down to here? All right. So, so that's how we actually read from the thing. See, again, I... <laughs> All right. So that's that. Now, what if I want to read from the file? If I want to read from the file, obviously I need to add some more features to my nice, uh, beloved employee over here. That employee of mine is only capable of writing. It cannot read anything of itself. So to, to do that, I'm going to add some more code to it. And it's all very simple and straightforward. Now, I'm actually adding a read to it. So the read function of mine receives an IF stream inside. I actually specifically designed it for, so that's not going to work with C in. That's going to only work for IF stream. I specifically designed it for that because <clears throat> I didn't want it to be read like that from the screen. Okay? So that's IF stream, and it's going to uh, get maximum of 30 characters, stop at a, at a comma, and, st uh, and then ignore that comma, read the employee number, ignore the next delimiter, read the salary, ex ignore the last delimiter that is actually a new line, okay? And keep reading like that and keep going through the, 
the, the stuff, and I and I overloaded the. Uh, uh, which one is insertion? Which one is extraction? I always get confused. The top one is extraction or, or extract. So insertion. So yeah, so I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, an old school guy. I call the the top one left shift. The bottom is right shift for me. I do assembly. So so insertion operator and, and extraction is something that they added recently. Those are actually left shift and right shift operators that are overloaded. Uh, you'll find out at the end of the semester when I teach you as, uh, uh, ma manipulating bits. Okay, so this is left shift and this is right shift. Okay, so yeah, uh, so now I have that one. Now I want to read from the file. So if I want to read from a file, I'm going to actually write a function that does that for me, which means I am going to pass... the f stream reference to a function i call it show record and i want to have the specific row to be shown in there okay so what i do um, i'm going to say okay to be able to so i'm hoping that i uh, that i pass something pass an if stream uh, file to this one that is already open and ready to rock and roll then i'm going to say clear yourself up which means if you are in a fail state clear yourself up we all know how that works. It works for C in, right? Then I'm going to say seek G. How many people know the seek functions from OOP244? And don't be shy. If you don't know, don't tell me. But I really want to know seek operations from OOP244. How many? Yes. Seek G, seek P. You don't know? Okay. So we have, we have, we have functions that works, work like this, actually. So we have... Uh, functions uh, that works lo work like this. Oh, look at this. Woohoo! All right. So we have seek functions, okay? Now, because they didn't want to have conflict between, because you, you should be able, when, when you say seek, essentially it means jump to certain address in the file, okay? You can say seek, seek 55. It means jump to 55th, 55th byte in memory. So you can start reading or writing over there. But if they call that seek, seek in I stream and O stream, when they would actually join in that multiple inheritance, we would have trouble, right? Then you had to use scope resolution for each of them, and it would be long to say, the heck with it. Let's put two different names so people know which one they are calling without any mistake. So what do we call it? They say if we are getting things, it means we are using it in C in. So that's seek G. So any seek G function and all its overloads belong to I stream, I F stream, seek G to get. Okay? To actually seek for writing stuff in a file, you have to seek put P. So if you say seek P, it means go to this address for writing. I want, to, I want the next write to happen at this address in the file. And that's what seek P is for. Now, sometimes you wonder where the hell right now is the pointer to write in a file. Like if I start writing right now, where in the file is supposed to write it? For that, we have the tell functions. Tell functions works the exact same way. When we say tell, it means tell where you are right now. But for what? For reading or writing? If it is for reading, it's tell G. It means tell me where you are. So, it's, so you can actually have, so file dot tell G, it gives you, a, it's called stream position. It's essentially an integer, but the type is iOS stream pause. Okay? So, it returns you that one, so it returns 952. It means I'm at uh, uh, position 952 for reading. So the next read that you're going to be doing, it's going to be the address 500, whatever I said. I don't remember what it was, 52, I guess. So that's that one. And if you want to check to see where is the next write is going to happen, that's going to be file. Look at my F. OK. <laughs> I need to learn how to write one day. So file 
the, tell, tell P. And that's going to actually tell you where the next write is going to happen. And these are the things that, that we need to know. So, so in here, I'm saying, <coughs> so that's absolute address, the zero that I put over there. So I'm saying clear and go to the first address of the file, which means where? The beginning, right? So essentially, I'm saying clear yourself, go to the beginning, and start uh, uh, reading employees one by one into E. So I'm kind of, that's the only way you can read from a text file, right? Why? Why, can I, why? why can't I just say jump to the fifth record? Why can't I say if I want to read Jack Marley over here, why can't I say just go to line number 12? Why can't I do that? Because Bob, J Jack Marley's name is different in size with Charles Montgomery Burns. One is big, one is small. The length of the record is different. Don't forget, a file is not linear, is not tabular as you see over here. There is no new line. It's just one long stream of characters. So it essentially, what you see right now in the file is something like this. And it keeps going. And the size of this record is different with this record. Why? Because Ned Flanders' name is different with Homer. Is it different? It actually looks like I hit the to me. But anyways, it might be different. Because of that fact, there is no way for you to be able to go to record number 12 unless you read 12 records. It's impossible. I have to read every single one and go to the next one. That's why these type of files are called sequential files. Th like this is exactly how the old tapes, you know, you know they used to actually save information on tapes, right? Anybody knows even what is a tape? Anybody knows what is a cassette? You know what? Anybody? Who, who doesn't know what a cassette is? OK, good. Nice. Now, to show you how old I am, I used to actually save my programs on cassettes, audio cassettes. I would actually say save and press the record button. I would, I would save that one over it. And to load it, I had to do that. It would take like nine hours to load the game. But anyways. So this is exact, but that's ex essentially the same thing. On a tape, to go halfway through the tape, you have no way by fast forwarding the whole thing and go. You cannot just jump to a, to a music and start playing it, right? It's the same thing over here, the same concept. There is no way that I can actually find where is the 12th record. So that's why I have written this function, which essentially says, keep reading, overwriting E, row many times. So essentially, I'm going to get to number whatever it is. And if in here I say if, uh, if F, why did I say that? Because the Boolean operator is casted on a file. You had that for C into. For some reason, everybody likes to call C in that fail. You don't need to. If you just say if C in, it's casted. It's a Boolean thing. If it returns true, it means CN is healthy. If it returns false, it means CN is in a failure mode. It's the same thing over here. So I'm saying if F is still in a good state, it means I am, I read everything successfully, I am at the row and show it. Otherwise, I'm out of bound. So now, if I actually want to show a record, I can actually do this. I can actually go to main, and in main, I can simply say, I need to first open the file for reading. So instead of this, I have to do this, OK? I don't need all this. I only need one employee now. And now I can say I have stream from employee. And now 
Actually, let me just take all these things out and just use the show thing. So let's do this. I'll bring that one out. So, uh, oh, I removed the file too. I can't even copy paste properly. There you go. So I can now say show record number 12 or show record number 200. And by, when I run this beautiful program of mine, three years later, four years later, five years later, I'll see that the 12th one is actually Mr. Jack Marley and the other one is out of bound because it went too, too far. Um, should I walk through it or we know it? Anybody wants me to? You're going to keep going until it can't read it, so it's going to stop. Okay? It would have been nice if I actually did this over here. Okay? And why it's giving me an error? Oh, why did I say E? Not E, F. It would have been nice if I did this. If, if is healthy, keep going. So I don't, because that's going to happen 200 times, and every time it's going to fail, it's not going to read, right? Are we okay? So it's the same thing like the other one. So it's going to stop when it fails, and I know it's out of bounds. So, um, so essentially, the first one goes 12 times. Let's, let's reduce it. Uh, instead of 12, I'm going to go 2 and walk through this. So it opens the file, now I go up, now uh, it clears, goes to the beginning, the first read happens successfully. If you see, it's, uh, it's Homer Simpson that it read successfully, goes up, reads the second one. The second one is Ned Flanders, and now it's done, it comes out, F is in a successful state, it, it prints Ned Flanders, and life is beautiful. And I have Ned Flanders over there, okay? But then the second time that it passes through, when it says 200, it comes up. It, I, 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 I'm not going to even go through it. It's going to keep going until it hits the end of the file. That's when F is going to fail. It comes out. E is going to keep. Let me do it. So the first time I'm running it, it's going to go through it successfully and it's going to show me Ned Flanders. And the second one I go through this, second time I go through this, if you see E is going to hold the last, oh, we actually won't get anything, it's just garbage. And F is uh, uh, setting in a false state. And therefore, it actually tells that it's out of bound, and uh, it tells me it's out of bound. OK? All right, so that's that. Now, of course, I could have done that manually and just read everything manually, which is essentially is while F file insertion into E, one by one, go through it and show it. I could use that. So essentially go through the file one by one, hit the file, file's going to go bad, and it's going to stop. You know that, like, because the, the uh, the right shift operator over is overloaded. It's going to return the file, right? So you can actually reuse it. The return value of it will be casted to a Boolean. Therefore, I know if it, if it failed or not. And it's the exact same thing. If I do this, it just runs it. So you're going to see that uh, uh, I listed everything. Then I showed record 12, and I'm going out of bound. Are we OK with this? I had something else that I wanted to show you. Let me pause it. Lots of good stuff are missed. Anyways, so the last time that I put that thing over there, thank you very much. You should have told me earlier. Thank you. But anyways, so for those who are watching this video, if suddenly you see it jump from one section to another, it's because I forgot to resume recording. <laughs> anyways, so now that I don't want to do the sequential thing over here, I want to get closer to a way that I can actually do things faster. I don't want to use this thing anymore. Okay? I don't want to write this thing anymore, use this operator anymore. When you think about it, your employee is somewhere in the memory, correct? Right? 
and it occupies certain space in memory. You can create arrays of it and do whatever you want to do with it, right? Isn't memory a stream of bytes? What's the difference between memory and a hard disk? Nothing. They are identical. One is just faster than the other. So I should be able to save my information in the hard drive the same way that I'm actually holding it in the memory. Now, when you are having a, a class, something that I need, need to tell you and you need to know is that the, a class occupies space only to the size of it, its attributes. Like, for example, if I know five different courses to teach, do I weigh more? No, it's more actions. If I know how to dance, do I weigh more? No, it's just behavior, right? Therefore, functions don't occupy space in classes. It doesn't matter if you have 50,000 methods, member functions, or two, it does not make any difference. They don't occupy space. The only thing that occupies space is the attribute, the member variables of the class, which is in this case, salary, employee number, and name. Are we okay with this? So instead of opening the file like that, I'm going to open the file like this. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, OST, OF stream file employee.dat. I'm not going to call it txt because it doesn't make sense. I could call it txt, but it's nuts because I'm not putting text file in there. I want to put binary information in it. So I'm going to say, open the file employee.dat in iOS binary mode. Okay? Now, iOS binary mode on Windows is actually different with iOS text. You know, because when you do FTP, you have to select if it's text or binary, right? When you're up with. On Linux, everything is binary. You don't have text. Everything is binary. Why should I? This suffers from DOS version 1 that they used to use 7 bits to hold, <laughs> to hold uh, characters. Okay, so the text and binary had different formats. Okay, and we are still paying for it. That, that's why that iOS binary, if you put it, it accepts it on Linux, but it just ignores it, doesn't make any difference. They're all binary. All right, so employee.dat, I'm going to open it in binary format. And I'm going to use a function called write. Now, write function has a feature, has a thing that I, till now, I did not understand why. I would love to be able to actually go talk to, the, to those who designed C++ and say, what the heck? Uh, this is something that it has. So there is a function called write. Function write gets the address of the beginning of a section in memory and its size. You can say, this place in memory, 50 bytes, copy into file. So it goes to the beginning of that thing, counts 50 bytes, whatever address you put in memory, and dumps it into the file. There is a problem with it. Not a problem, it's just something that you need to know. This is function write. And this is the address. So I essentially have an employee, right? So I'm saying auto, which means an iterator, EMP in E, which means EMP becomes an employee, right? So employee that is in E, one by one is going to be set to employees of, that are in this vector. And I'm going to say, take the address of that EMP that you just set and dump it into the file to the size of employee to all those who use size of to find out the length of the string in your midterm. Shame on you. Shame. Size of finds the size of an entity, not the null terminating thing in a string. A string doesn't have size of. Size of, size of an integer is four. Size of a double is eight, correct? And what is size of a string, C string, if you do size of? 
always for. Because you're essentially ask it, you're asking it, what is the size of the pointer that points to a character? It's always for. Okay? Do not use size of. String is a null terminated array of characters where you it's a sequential thing if you think about it. You have to read the characters one by one and count until you hit the null. So in here, for some unknown reason, remember I gave you a thing, memory copy, and I said use void pointers? And you actually put void pointer, and then you cast it to a character to copy the bytes? OK? They didn't bother doing that. They said, we're going to put a character pointer. Anything you want to pass to us, you cast it to character. So that's why I casted the address of employee to a character pointer in there and passed it to write. OK? So it can start counting. I, if I would have written the right, I would actually pass the void pointer over there. So you can put any address in it. You don't have to cast everything. Like That's something that you have to always add. You have to always cast it to a constant character pointer and pass it. So you are saying, convert that address of employee to bytes and keep copying blindly anything that you see in that and put it in employee.bat. So when I copy this beautiful thing of mine and I, and I run it three years later, like the other one, I'm not going to have any type of output. But if I add that one over here, that employee dot that, this is what I'm going to see in it. OK? Now, if you see, you can still see Homer Simpson over there, right? You can still see Ned Flanders. You can see, so, but it's somewhere in the middle. OK? And what is the beautiful thing about this? The number of records are identical. Because size of an employee is always the same. An employee is always double, int, and 31 characters. Of course, it's going to align it to match it. Remember about alignments? Size of, I told you what you see. Okay. So it's going to see always the size is that. So now, if I want the 13th record, I can simply get a size of employee, multiply it by 12, and jump to that address directly. I am right at the beginning of the 13th record. I don't have that. So, so accessing the records in a file would be instantaneous. I do not need to count the things one by one, go up to the delimiter and find something. I can just get everything one by one. The, draw, the, the fallback for this will be for every single name, I am saving 31 characters. That's the problem. So if I have Joe Lee over there, it's got to be J-O-E space L-E-E -E and, and a thing. So it's got to be what, eight characters? I'm saving 31 characters for eight. But the heck with it. I need the speed. So I'm going to waste the memory. It's always a trade-off between speed and the amount of memory that you use in any scenario. If you want it to be shorter, Go with the text file. But if you want to find 15th million record over there, good luck. For me, it's just an address. I jump to it. For you, you have to count 15 million records until you get to that one. You follow? All right. Now that I have this thing, I can actually start reading from a uh, binary file. Where did I put it? So to read from a binary file, I can do amazing stuff. So now take a look. To read, I am not looping through anything. This is my seek G, remember? That was zero in my show record. In my show record, I was seeking to the beginning of the file and then count row many times. Remember that? Now all I do, I'm going to say, this is my employee, clear DF, seek to row minus one, multiply to the size of the employee, and stop right there. 
So it jumps exactly to the row that I want and reads from there. No looping, schmooping thingy. There is one important thing that you need to remember. Seeking does not put an I stream or O stream object into failure. I paid a big price for that. Like it took me a while to, because I was seeking and I hope, and I was hope, if, I, if my file is 900 characters and I seek to address 1,000, it's going to fail. No, seek only sets the, some attribute inside your file that the next read is supposed to be at that address. For it to fail, you have to actually do a read. Remember that. So seeking, if you seek to some garbage address in the file, it's not going to fail. But as soon as you read or you want to write, that's when it's going to say, what the heck? The size is 900 bytes. You asked me to write in a 10,000 byte. Are we okay with this? Problem? It's lots of information I know, but hey. <clears throat> so now this is going to be much better and easier for me to read. So it, it essentially does the same thing if you see. So I'm <clears throat> to, to put everything one by one, I'm starting from zero. I say uh, while, but as you see, read it, reads signature is exactly like write. The only difference is that the first <clears throat> <clears throat> argument that you are passing is not a constant character pointer anymore. It's a character pointer because you have to write into it. So you give the address, you say, okay, this is my employee address. Go to the file, read these many bytes from the file, and dump over it. And you're done. So it overwrites the thing. It's a mem copy that it does over the thing. Blindly copies everything. So essentially, you Xerox into a file, then you Xerox it back. And everything goes back exactly where they were because it was a Xerox copy of it. <clears throat> the first one was a, a double, the second one was an integer, and it does it the exact same way, and it reads it from it perfectly. So if I run this program, it comes out exactly the same way, walk through it. <clears throat> I have five minutes, I'm gonna actually, in this five minutes, expl I, I, I prepared lots of good stuff in here, I'm not gonna get to it, but I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen if something, uh, you'll see. <clears throat> uh, so that's that. What was my second example? Yeah, the second example was just showing how to go back and forth in this thing. Yeah, uh, let me show this to you too. Oh yeah, in here as you see, let me just show you. Uh, did I run this program? No, let me run it. Yeah, so now take a look. I told you, like, you want to know what is the size of a file? It's very easy. <clears throat> Seek has an overload. The second overload gets an offset. And then, where from? So you can say seek so many positions from three different locations. Beginning, so seek beginning is exactly the same thing as this one. This is a stupid thing to write, I think, because this is identical to this one. Seek zero characters from the beginning, it means seek to zero address, the same thing. Or I can say seek zero characters from the current location. Or if you want to go backwards, you can say seek minus size of employee from. So you can go backwards in a file if you want to, or forward. So that could be the first thing of seek with two arguments, could be negative or positive, either from beginning, current, or end. So you, if you want to read the last one, you seek to end, you come back minus size of employee, and you're on the last record. Okay? Now if I want to find out what is the size of uh, the file, what do I do? I'm going to say seek to the end zero characters back and forth, which means if I can type end, so it goes literally to the end. Now I'm going to say tell me where you are right now. That's the size of the file in bytes, right? Go to the end, tell me where you are. And if I want to know how many records I have in a file, I just 
divide that to the size of employee. And I have the number of the file, a number of the things. So now if you look at the output of this one, it actually tells me I have 912 bytes and total of 19 employees in there. So I can actually see how many records I have like that. Easy. Okay, that's the beauty of writing random access files. You don't have to sequentially go back and forth into it. <clears throat> but the problem comes, I'm just going to tell you what the problem is, the heck with it, and I'm going to bring the thing later. This is the problem. I'm not going to show you the code for it. I'm going to write it over here. The problem is that when you're dealing, this is all good and nice and fun and glorious when your data is within your class. If you, are if you have dynamic memory allocation, you're screwed. Why? Because the data is outside of your class. If I actually have dynamic memory allocation in there, I'll be in trouble. Which one I am in? This is CD, so. Now, I'm not going to tell you anything. Uh, we'll, talk, we'll continue the next time. Because uh, I wanted to show you random access stuff, so. Anyway, so let me just pause it.